Uh, we're joined uh, now by Ayo Epo, who is the team leader of the uh, power sector component at the United Kingdom Nigeria Infrastructure Advisory Facility. Uh, good to have you on Newsnight tonight. Well, only about three months ago, if my memory serves me right, uh, the minister did announce that there was such a policy in the offing. And now uh, you have a document. How far-reaching, you know, how all-encompassing is this policy if it eventually, you know, uh, becomes reality? <laughs> I, I, I hear the slight skepticism, <coughs> but anyway, thank you for having me. Good evening mm -hmm. uh, to you and to your viewers. Um, so what, what, what happened today was a big step, I would say, in the policy development process. Mm -hmm. um, it's not quite a completed journey. Um, what we handed to the minister was a culmination of something like uh, almost 10, 11 months of consultation um, anchored by the ministry with various stakeholders external to the ministry or to the government in the sense that uh, private sector players, academia, uh, donor partners, financial in services industry, all sorts of players came together over three, four sessions um, and just tried to ask themselves, we've had a policy in the country since 2001. It hasn't been reviewed. It's just there. So it's obviously no longer fit for purpose. And so um, in fulfillment of one of the requirements of the New Electricity Act, which was assented to by the president in June last year, in July, I'm sorry, last year, um, it requires that a new policy pr development process is started within a year of that um, legislation coming into force. And that's what the minister did. He got a process started. And so the outcome of all these discussions over the last year or so was handed to him today. So we call it a zero draft. Now, he, the minister, the honorable minister, will then take that document. Having had this consultation process with the external stakeholder group, so you might say, um, he's now going to consult with his colleagues in government who, you know, the power sector is, is it touches all sorts of um, areas, environment, water resources, finance, oil and gas, and petroleum, um, both, both sides. So consult with MDAs um, on the government side now, with state governments, and then the outcome of all these discussions will now be taken, put together in a final draft and taken to the Executive Council for approval. But the key thing here is, is that we haven't had in the country a definitive guiding document for the sector in mm -hmm. that is, shall I say, as I said before, fit for purpose, right. that is current in the last 23 years. It was 2001 that we had a policy, it was done. Um, things have happened, lots of things have happened. Some things have not happened, obviously, as you hinted at. Um, but at least we now have a, you might say, a strategic guide that helps bring various thoughts together and then gives the Ministry of Power the ability to then oversight and say, look, we, this is a process that we need to follow right. in these developments. It looks pretty much like uh, another proposal for government uh, uh, in the face of having a regulator. You have uh, uh, it, it, it's even coming at a time where uh, ESCOM is uh, going the Nigerian way in South Africa. So l let us in on mm -hmm. the unique uh, points in that document that truly tells us that, look, uh, this is away from NEC and this is away from the ministry and, mm -hmm. uh, and the, the key players in the sector. Okay. So NEC is your regulator. NEC is not a policymaker. NEC on the side of how the sector operates on a day-to-day -day basis, mm -hmm. kind of implements policy, but also directly oversights how that policy is played out by various players in the, in the, in, in the industry. <coughs> so key things. Number one, um, you would say that I think the most important bit at the moment is the fact that we used to have a centralized electricity sector where everything that was done was done from First Lagos, but now Abuja. So operations, regulation was all done for the entire country from one location, it was central. Um, with the passage of the Electricity Act last year, that changed. You now have a dual market. You've got a wholesale market, just trying to simplify it. So think of your Cadbury. Yeah. Um, it manufactures bone vita in two or three factories and it moves them across the country. Just a beverage <coughs> company. When it gets into mm -hmm. those local markets, right. people sell their, their Cadbury products at different prices for their market. 
probably close to the same thing, but the, the cost of, say, bond vita might vary in Calabar as it does in Lagos, as it does in Zamfara or in, or in Borno. So you've got one set of regulations dealing with how that Cadbury products or how you, the are manufactured. Chocolate beverage. And then chocolate the, beverage. Well, Unless, let's, let's just say chocolate pay, beverage. Yeah. Unless you want to pay for The point I'm making here <laughs> is that yeah. you've got one market that mm -hmm. talks about how these things move across the country right. and another set of markets in each of the states mm. that deals with how the consumer now. So we don't go to the Cadbury factories to go and buy a bond vita. We buy them from uh, local sellers. And that's a different kind retailer. of market. So the same thing with electricity. Mm. Your bulk electricity is your national market because it crosses borders. But once it gets into different states, it's a different cup of tea. How will all of this so impact... I'm only Availab talking about impact, availability, yeah. affordability, it, 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 sustainability. It, 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 it still, it still looks like, <laughs> you know, yeah. it still looks like we're duplicating what we already have. You have Enbet, you have mm -hmm. NEC, you have the ministry there, and you have the Discos, you have the Genkos, you have the TCN. Mm -hmm. uh, I haven't actually seen anything unique in that document. It's that not about uniqueness. It's no, no, it, it is uh, more about uniqueness. No. Otherwise, it's more or less like another business and a new administration. Someone is giving them a new proposal for the power sector, I so would say it's still in the same That may cycle. end up the same way. It's not about uniqueness in the sense of doing something new. Right. It's more about having a guide, right? We all need to have some kind of strategic document that helps us, mm. right? Gives us objectives, gives us line of sight to what it is we need to achieve and enables us to be able to then mark ourselves as to how we are progressing. We haven't had that for a long time. Yeah, so, so that's why the question for, as to the key points in this policy draft. And I was trying to say here yeah. that you've got now mm -hmm. a new kind of sector, different kind of sector, not new, but a different kind of sector, right? right? That is no longer, you've got two parts to it. You've got to deal with your talk of the town today, climate change, low carbon economies, mm -hmm. and the transition to more efficient use of energy. That's another point. You've got to address the fact that uh, gender issues, poverty issues, social inclusion is something that is critical also for the power sector. You've got to look at the fact that we have to develop our local content and our human resources. Mm -hmm. So your policy paper, when you look at it, tries to address these different issues in a way that gives us line of sight to clear cut <coughs> objectives that we need to ach achieve in these sectors for the power sector. Is there a timeline, is there a window within which Nigerians will begin to see you know, this policy kick in and begin to see, you know, uh, results? Well, so it's so not a case of, you know, wasting money and time no, and everything. It's, 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 it's less about wasting money and time and more about us, all of us, right, being able to rally around a certain specific set of objectives mm. and then work along those lines to achieve this objective. So in terms of timelines, I, I, I try to run away from the tyranny of numbers. Right. Number one. Number two, I'm not, I'm not the minister. Mm. It's not my place to begin to you know, set targets for people. Um, the consultation pr process is still ongoing. Yes, we're close to the end of it now. But now the critical bits, which is those on the government side and how they connect with it and how they want to see themselves coming together to implement it needs to be discussed. That's when you begin to have the timelines. I'll point out something. Mm. Um, the Electricity Act requires that we have both a policy and a plan for implementing that policy. Mm -hmm. So we've only just done the policy, policy side. side. The planning side, the timelining, the certain objectives in specific you know, um, segments is what is going to happen next. And then you'll have these two documents come together. So um, what we've done today, I would say, is probably I would say maybe 70 80%. But the critical bit, okay. maybe 30%, but it's also very important. And you can't have a complete you know, set of documents without mm. those two parts coming So together. very quickly, too, no, before no, I, I let you go, 30,000 megawatts generation by 2030, is that realistic for Nigeria well, as a plan? Honestly, a plan? honestly, you know, so something else needs to be, needs to be said here. We have... In 30 seconds, if you can. Okay, so <laughs> that's, that's, a subject, that, that's a subject that I can't discuss in 30, okay. 30 seconds. All right, Certainly so not. we'll have to uh, leave it there. There you go. April team lead, a power sector component, United Kingdom, Nigeria, infrastructure advisory facility. Thank you very much for Thank joining us. Thank you for us. having me.